This episode of Filmland is brought to you by Wondershare DVD Creator. Today on Filmland, we're doing this. <laughs> Much better. And now a word for my new sponsor. Hey guys, Grant Cook here. You may remember me from the show you're currently watching, but I'm here today to talk about Wondershare DVD Creator. With Wondershare, you can create DVDs with virtually any video format because they support up to 150 different types. And I don't know about you, but that seems like a lot. And of course, it supports all the DVD formats like all these ones down here. And more importantly, it allows you to burn a DVD in just one click. So if you're in the market for a DVD creator, why not click the link below and give Wondershare DVD creator a spin. Get it, because it's a... Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. And no doubt you can see that we're not on our regular set, and that's mainly because I'm absolutely pushed for time, guys. I'm trying to get this one out by the end of the month, and I'm actually leaving on vacation in less than a day. So it's crunch time right now. No doubt you've seen from the start that we're doing the flash ring effect from season five. Now, in order to complete this effect, you need to shoot your actor with a flash ring, just hammering that fist straight into camera. Now you also need to grab a nice close-up of you opening the ring up like so. Just do it the exact same way I'm doing it and try to match the angle that you've originally shot as best you can. Now this particular flash ring that opens up like this, I actually bought this from Wish.com for roughly $4. And I just want to thank everyone that supports us on Patreon and sponsors down below because you allow us to buy these cool props. Now you also need to head to filmlearning.com slash downloads and grab the Flash Rings Effects Pack, which contains our Cinema 4D file, which will be able to custom make our shirt. It also contains a Flash Ring sound effect from the blast. And it also contains this super awesome lightning animation that was actually hand drawn by 9A Films. You can check out both the blast and 9A Films by clicking the card above and give them some love guys go over there and subscribe to their channels because they make awesome content now you also need to shoot a chain shirt shot now what i mean by that is you want to shoot your actor running into the shot with the original shirt they're wearing and then run into the shot again wearing the shirt that they're supposed to be changing into now you might be asking yourself why are we doing a t-shirt instead of a flash suit well how many of you actually have a flash suit versus how many of you have a t-shirt? So I just wanted to make this nice and custom so everyone can do this effect. Now that we got all that out of the way, let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, here we are in After Effects and I've got my comp set up and ready to go. As you can see, we have our fist coming on screen and well, nothing's happening here. No ring opening, no shirt coming out, nothing. You might also notice that the end of our comp here is a different shot. And that's because this part has already been sped up in editing to show flash speed running. Now guys, for more info on how to do that, click the card above as we're not going to be covering that in this episode because we've done it a whole bunch of times. So let's start with that ring opening as it's a pretty easy thing to do. So the first thing we need to do is select our footage and we're going to head to effect, Boris effects and let's grab Mocha because you guessed it, we gotta track that ring. Let's now launch Mocha and do just that. So here we are in Mocha guys. And all I'm gonna do is head to the end of our shot and let's grab an ellipse mask from the shape menu, which by the way is a new mocha feature that I love. And we're gonna draw around the face of our ring like so. Let's then head down here and set that to 90% pixels and we're gonna track backwards. Now guys, I already know that the track's gonna drop when my hand goes off screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and just skip forward until I've adjusted the track and we're all good to go. So here's our finished track guys. If you'd like more info on roto work and tracking in Mocha, just click the card above as we've covered that a few times as well. Now we've got our track. Let's save and head back to After Effects. Back in After Effects and I've already taken the liberty of adding a ring close up to a comp. Now remember this shot guys? Well, here's what you need to do. I'm just gonna turn on my mask layers and show you really quick. So essentially what I've done here is mask out the ring opening from the rest of the shot. You'll have to do this frame by frame guys and I've actually split each frame into its own layer and masked them individually as the shape and points you know they're a little bit too different from mask path animation and it will just get a bit fiddly. The other option here is to roto this in mocha guys either way like I said it's fiddly but it's easy work but once we get that ring all the way opening on this last frame here all we're going to do is right click head to time and select freeze frame. 
Now this not only saves us from doing any more of this damn roto, it also gives us a lot more footage to work with as we're no longer restricted with however long this shot goes. We can just drag this out to infinity, guys. Cool, huh? Now I know I'm not going fully in depth with the ring opening, but I think we all know how masking is done at this point, so I really don't want to go over it again because I think I'll just be repeating myself. So we've isolated that ring opening, guys. Let's head back to our final shot and naturally throw this thing in here, right where we want the ring to open. Here is good, I think. We can then use the scale, position and rotation to move it into place on top of our original flash ring like so. Just match this as best you can, guys. There we go. From there, we want to color correct this to, once again, match our original ring as best we can. As always, gang, I'm using Colorista 4 from Red Giant to do this, but as I always say, feel free to use whatever color grading plugins you wish. If I turn this on and off, you can see we've done a pretty decent job at matching it, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, let's add our tracking data. Now before we add our tracking data, there's one thing I need to address. Our replacement ring doesn't exactly match our original footage ring. If we go back and forth, there is a discernible difference between the two. So I think what we might do is just replace the ring entirely from start to finish of this shot. So in order to do that, I'm going to duplicate our ring comp, drag it to the start of our comp, and then I'm going to right click, head to time and select freeze frame. We now have a still frame of our ring closed. This will give us enough frames to completely replace the ring. Okay, now all we have to do is head to the point where the two comps interact and just trim the excess off that top layer. Done. Now, before we can add tracking data to this, let's highlight both of the ring comps, right click and hit pre-compose. And we'll just call this ringy and make sure that all attributes are in the new composition. Let's select the footage layer, open the Mocha tracking data. We'll then grab our tracking data from the menu. Let's then select transform data and then finally, select the ring comp as our export layer and BAM! Now I'm not sure why, but it's a little bit off, so all I'm going to do is just open up our pre-comp, highlight both layers, and just adjust them slightly until our ring marries up again. I'll just do a little bit of back and forth here, until I'm happy. If we turn on motion blur for the comp and the layer, and of course, check out our preview, you can see that we now have our ring attached to our hand and it looks great. Now gang, as a cherry on top, you can also add an adjustment layer on top of this and then head up to effect, generate and add a light raise. We can then add that to the opening of the ring. We'll then trim the adjustment layer so that it starts right when the ring opens around here. Now gang, since it's not a crazy amount of frames and there's not a ridiculous amount of movement, I simply hand animated the center point of the light rays to match the opening of the ring for the duration of the shot. And on top of that, I also hit the stopwatch on intensity at the first frame. I then skipped ahead, say about halfway through, and then I dropped it down to zero. This sells a sudden burst of light that's coming out of the ring when it opens and then fades out. Okay, that's the ring all sorted. Now, onto the shirt. Now guys, before we open up cinema, we've got to customize that shirt. And we can do that straight in After Effects if you don't have Photoshop, or you can do this in Photoshop. Works exactly the same way. Now, what I need you to do is open up the materials folder that came with the download pack, and we're gonna grab a picture that's marked Shirt Pack 1 Diffuse. It's actually a pink one. Okay, now we're gonna grab that and drop it into a comp. Now guys, what we need to do here is pretty simple. We just select that layer, head up to Effect, Color Correction, and grab a Hue and Saturation and just play with the hue and the saturation and the lightness until you find a color that works for you. I'm gonna go with this bright purple just because why not? And then I'll just import say this 8-bit character that I designed for Sick Kick and I'll drop that in and just size it to my liking. Custom shirt design done. All you have to do then is head up to composition, select save frame as and save a brand new PNG file. You can overwrite the old one if you want or you can just rename this and render out a new one. Custom shirt, guys, is now done. Next, we need to head over to the Cinema 4D file called Shirt01. Let's select that, head up to Edit, and select Edit Original. Now this is gonna open up the file in Cinema 4D. Now gang, I've said this before, but if you have After Effects CC, you have Cinema 4D Lite already, so you're already good to go. 
a lot of people don't actually know that. So guys, here we are in Cinema 4D and here's our shirt animation all ready to go. Now guys, if you saved your diffuse layer over the top of my original film linen logo shirt, your shirt should already look exactly how you designed it. If not, I'm gonna show you how to fix that right now. Let's head down to the material menu, which is down here, and we're gonna double click on the shirt material, and then we're gonna to head to the color menu. Let's click on the arrow right here next to texture and click load image. You can then grab your new design and click OK. All done. Your custom shirt is ready to go. Now guys, if I could, I'm just gonna hit pause on the tutorial right now, and I just wanna talk about how I've actually achieved this effect. You can see over here, we've got a bunch of little purple things here. And these are deformers, and they're all working in tandem to sell the illusion that this is a cloth simulation, because Cinema 4D Lite doesn't actually have a dynamic cloth sim. So what I've done here is kind of cheat and just use a bunch of these things here to make it look like crumpled, bunched up cloth that is unraveling. Pretty cool, huh? Now gang, it's totally up to you if you wanna change the camera angle, the lighting, however you wanna play with everything in here to get the result that you want. Now, me personally, well, since I animated this for my particular shot, I'm keeping it totally the same. I just wanted to point out that don't feel restricted by what I've done here. Have a play and find out what works for you. But I'm happy, so let's head back to After Effects, shall we? Okay, so back in After Effects, we've got our shirt animation all done. So let's drop that into a comp all on its own. And from here, I wanna render this one out before we bring it into our final shot. Because if we just bring it into our final shot right now, it's gonna be render intensive and it's gonna take forever. So let's click on the layer, head to effects and set the render mode now to standard final. Once that's done loading, we'll hit control M to add it to the render queue and let's click on lossless. Now, all I'm gonna do here gang is select quick time and set the RGB settings to RGB plus alpha. Let's then hit render and cut back with it all done. Okay, it's all rendered and I've imported my rendered movie file. Let's then grab it and drop it into our final shot right here where the ring opens. Done. Now we can see that our shirt is missing something and that my friends is, well, on top of everything, motion blur. It looks far too clean and it just doesn't suit the shot at all. So let's head over to presets and add pixel motion blur to our shirt layer. From there, I'm gonna tweak the vector samples. I'm gonna increase this to say 20. Now, this is gonna give us a smooth motion blur, but just to warn you, it's gonna increase your render time. So you have been warned. From there, I'm also seeing a little bit of a matte line, which I absolutely hate. So let's head back over and add a matte choker to our shot right here. That just works fine on default. So I'm just gonna leave that as is. Next up, we need to blend our shirt into the shot a little better. And you know what's coming guys. I'm going to add Colorista and adjust the shirt color to match our shot a little bit better. I'm so predictable. Uh, nearly done gang. I also decided since the focal point of our original footage right here is my hand, so the shirt shouldn't be in focus, right? So let's head up to effect, blur and sharpen and grab camera lens blur. I think I'll leave this on say 2.5 and then check repeat edge pixels. We need that on. We'll then hit the stopwatch. I'll then head to the end of the layer and crank this up to say 12. This way it gets more out of focus the further it moves towards camera, which makes sense. Now guys, last step with the shirt. This is a little something extra that I feel adds a bit more depth to this shirt animation. So let's head to effect, distort and add turbulent displace. We're gonna set this to bulge and then set the amount to zero. We'll then hit the stopwatch and then we're gonna move ahead say 15 frames and crank it up to 25. Let's then jump ahead another 20 or 30 frames and set it to 35. Now guys, what this is gonna do is make it look like your shirt is billowing during camera movement, thus better selling the idea that it's a real shirt moving through space. Now one last cherry on top, gang. Let's duplicate our ring opening and we'll drag it above our shirt layer. Done. From there, I wanna head to the very first frame of our shirt animation and what I wanna do is trim this ring opening comp to last only one frame on this frame right here. So let's trim the front, 
there we go. And then we're just going to skip ahead one frame and get rid of the excess there. Now from there, I'm gonna grab the pen tool and we're gonna mask around this part of the clasp opening right here. We'll then feather that out. Nice, that way we see the shirt peeking out from the inside of the ring before it's fully open. Now gang, of course I've added the lightning to the final shot as well and some camera shake, all things that I've covered multiple times before, so I'm not gonna be going over them right here. Now as far as our second shot goes, when the shirt change occurs, well, it's really just the same method of adding the shirt render to the scene. The only real difference being is that you're combining two separate shots together, your regular shirt shot and your change shirt shot. You can see that I've done that here. It's a pretty easy cut. You just wait till the person's kind of blurred out. Once you add the shirt O2 render on top of that, it kind of all comes together quite easy. Now guys, I honestly wish I had more time to go in depth on this one. I might do that on a stream when I come back from vacation, but sadly my time is up because that my friends is another effect. Mm, done. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. Today on Filmon, we're doing this. Hmm. Much better. So guys, that's my take on the flash ring effect from The Flash Season 5. As you can see, it does take a few steps to get right, but in the end, it looks really, really awesome. But once again, guys, that is my time. If you did enjoy the episode, please smash that like button. I really do appreciate it. And hey, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a single film in an episode. There won't be a film in an episode next week, guys. I'm sorry about that, but I'm taking the first vacation I've had in two years, so... Whew, looking forward to that. I've also got two other episodes of Filmland and right over here I've got my social media crap above my head. You can check out our Patreon here or you can just click that join button below if you want to sponsor the channel. But until I see you again guys, keep learning!